Uh, time for Fisherman's Forum. And seeing as today we're especially privileged by having a, a Welsh legend in our midst, yes. I think we will to make use of him, don't you? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. 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 I don't think anyone in this room's called more soon than you, Mock. So, uh, as I say, if we could ask Di and Mock to come and sit up here, replace us, and um, for our you only need me with a legend. You only need me with a legend. You can take the hard question. <laughs> and we'll let you fire questions at least to uh, local experts. And they, they pass them back a long way in this part of the world, these two. Well, you have to apologise, ladies and gentlemen, that a couple of the guys who are usually on the forum, Stefan and Eric, have uh, got a wedding today. So. That's why I'm the only one. I've got the mock. <laughs> <laughs> right, any questions? Are you here for a swimming, salmon, or trout? There's all kinds of swimming and trout, basically. I've like, only just started fly fishing. Do you know what? Um, Pat was talking about swimming fishing during the night, obviously. Um, I'm pretty new to fly fishing by casting. It seems alright until it gets very dark. Do many people catch swim in the evenings or have I got to it until it's very dark? No. Well, do you notice this, Mr. Morgan? Well, um, <coughs> I, I, amazingly, the last uh, few years, because of a serious illness, I, I, I cut down night fishing, you know, a lot, because I always do think when I used to come down here, right? If I'm travelling a bit, then I'm going to fish from dusk to dawn. And uh, I remember working out uh, uh, the percentage. And you know, the best hour was half past two to half past three. And that was over the season. Uh, and uh, of course, the one thing on Fida Galve, there weren't many left at half past two, so I was happy. <laughs> so, but um, uh, the. Uh, Efforts on some rivers last year was very little, and especially on club waters, because I, I think clubs are experiencing a difficult time. But uh, a lot of the fish were taken, um, well, in the first hour, and uh, that, uh, that was the most productive hour on the Rheidol and the Estwith, uh, which were rivers, and uh, then on the Dubby, of course, there's a um, the pools are not disturbed by spinning or anything during the day, so you know people going there about seven, eight o'clock and fishing in the dusk do well. So that is the same applies with this river as well. You know, I mean, Mox fish this river obviously far far longer than I have, but I mean that's been the situation here as well. Believe it or not, I mean uh, there's a couple of guys staying here at the moment. Uh, they had a couple of fish last night, uh, good fish. And I think, I don't know what time they started, but I think they packed up sort of 10, 30 to 11 o'clock. And I had a few fish, you know. So it, it is an not, because I'm just like Mock. I mean, I'm, I was, used to fish with Mock in Vida Galloway when I was a, a child, a kid, you know. Um, obviously fish all night until dawn. And as Mock, I mean, what Mock just said, I mean, it was an amazing time, you know, just before dusk or whatever. It was, it was a great time. And obviously the first hour, as soon as it got dark, you know, say this time, 10 o'clock or whatever, until maybe midnight, well, say a couple of hours then, it's always a good time. But I mean now, no, I mean you can start fishing nine o'clock before it gets dark. But I mean obviously practice your casting. I mean it, it is a necessity to be able to cast well I and mean, you get far more enjoyment out of your sports, you know. And it, it's, only a, it's only practice and experience really that, you know, if you can't seem to be casting well at dark, it, it's only practice and, and you'll you soon get the grips with it. Well, I think that Pat said, you know, you don't have to go out very far. No. If you've got chest waders and you weigh carefully and you have a careful approach to the river, you know, you can just stick within your limitations. Mm. That's the best thing to do to start with, otherwise you're going to be under a tangle for you not get any fishing back. I remember fishing with Dye's father and they, they used to close the pubs at nine o'clock then and his father used to be down 
on a free the gal bed by twenty past nine. Well, here on the pub, actually, and they used to close at ten o'clock at that time. I mean, going back to the nine o'clock. <laughs> I thought it was ten. Well, it, well, well, I thought it was ten o'clock. And as soon as he shut the pub, I mean, he was down on the river you know, every night of the week, you know. Actually. But I remember going down uh, with him, and. Um, before we came down to Orfita Galloway, we were both, I can't understand how we had gone to the other side. Anyway, that side, we were walking on the other side, and I said, hey, there's a sewing moving there. No, 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 he said, no, 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 trout, you haven't got sewing here, bloody hell, I said, I'm going to have a go at it anyway. And would you believe it, that's the first sewing I've ever caught on a dry flight, and uh, it was a small grey duster. Oh, and I was really proud, you know, when I started off, and then, of course, well, we went on and caught about a dozen because that was the going number that that, that time, and I had a less than a quarter of that, but that's another story. But um, I, I, I remember fishing for what uh, uh, they regarded as sea trout, I'm not sure if that was right, in Finland. Well then, of course, you don't get night there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At two o'clock in the morning, it was daylight, you know. And so, really, uh, you were fishing for sewing there right through, but uh, uh, that was quite a few years ago, but that was superb fishing. And uh, even better than, although Sweden has the big name for, you know, the Pro and those, but. Uh, Believe you me, uh, at that time, but uh, uh, they've lost lost most of the uh, of the sea trout now in uh, so, um, in Finland. And there is a problem, you know, with sewing stocks with us. I think that uh, there is a slight drop. Well, the figures are showing it, and the catches are fishing. Whether uh, I tend to think that the fishing effort is not quite as I don't know. No, to, no, definitely not. No. No. A lot of people refrain from sea trout fishing and that because it's night time fishing. You know, I mean, some people are scared of the dark and this, that, and the other. But I mean, you, you just mentioned about fishing in the daytime. I mean, I've caught sea trout on a dry fly, as, as Mark just said. You know, it's purely fishing for them in the daytime. And a friend of mine who comes down from Cardiff, uh, Jeff Thompson, he's an ex international, Mark knows him, he comes down here for a couple of weeks every season. To stay in the caravan just up the road here, and he catches sea trout in the daytime in the run just above here uh, with sunken uh, weighted nymphs, you know, the bugs that they use now for, for grailing and things, you know, on the, on the, on the D and all this stuff. And it, it, it proved successful, you know. But there's nothing like the night fishing for them, though, you know, the excitement, and it's, it's really great, you know, fantastic. You mentioned the, um, the grubs, the, you know, the heavy European nymphs. Mm -hmm. And it is amazing, you know, we run competitions on the River Dee, and the River Dee below um, Tangochen is a great uh, uh, grailing river. But every year when we run competitions there, you'd be amazed at the number of salmon that are taken on goldheads. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> and you're talking about really small flies, aren't you? Oh, you're <coughs> talking about size 12, uh, 12, 12, 12 hooks. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, you, are, you know, you just cast uh, about two, three hours in front of you and make sure that you are bumping the bottom and then hang it there behind. And uh, it is amazing. The, I remember the first uh, lad who caught a salmon. We up through. This is wonderful. But it was happening, you know. So there are quite a few people and you know are turning <laughs> to fishing for uh, salmon with bugs. But um, yeah, that is a, a river uh, which is a controlled river, the most controlled river in Europe. <coughs> you know, four reservoirs feeding it, and they can, uh, uh, you know, keep the level at exactly the level they want. Any more questions? Where can we find the grayling then? Well, the, do you know more about the grayling then? I've got over a salmon and a sea yeah, trout yeah. fish at the yeah. Although I do fish for trout, you know, I love fishing for trout with the dry fly. But I believe lampit is, is the area. Just another cannibal. Yeah, between oh, cannibal and lampit. Yeah. Yeah. If you go up to my sea salt beads, yeah, my sea yes. salt yes. where I have several good pods of grayling. Yeah. Now I've taken this up with the Dorek Wirthion, uh, uh, as the name of the farm. He came to 
Um, two years ago, he came to the Royal Welsh and we had a display there. And, uh, and he lets out the fishing to Ponta de Lais. And he was saying that um, the previous year not a single grayling had been caught by the Ponta de Lais boys. Because, but mind you, they come up there and it's an outing. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, uh, some of them retire for a, a lunch and they <laughs> come back. <laughs> and their, res their results are not. But um, it was amazing. He said that they always used to get a few grading, but that's t two years ago that hitherto they, they hadn't taken them. So uh, he suggested that uh, they are dying out there. I don't, I don't know, I haven't... But, but as you said, uh, to interrupt, Mark, they do fish hard, these boys, and I mean, you know, they, they just slot to whatever there. So, that, you know, I, I wouldn't expect to see a lot of grayling in that stretch because it's grossly overfished, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Grossly overfished. I mean, the grayling aren't going to stick to that. I mean, they're going to move away from that, you know, place that's been pounded all the time, you know? Well, the other thing is that those big grayling, we have them over two pounds on the time mm -hmm. in there. Yeah, in that region, they take a very long time to grow to that age. So if anybody kills them, you know, you really are uh, wiping out uh, something that's virtually irreplaceable in our lifetime. So, I mean, predominantly it's winter fishing anyway, oh, yeah. you know, and how many people are there out? I, I have, in, in my 55 years of fishing, I, I've not seen anybody fish for green, you know, to be honest with you. Maybe they do, I mean, there's a gentleman in the back of the cat, do you, do you do any green well, fishing? what I was going to say. The, the reason you've got a fair few around my sister is because it is lightly fished mm -hmm. uh, right. and uh, it, a lot of it is inaccessible from the other far back as well, so yeah, it, it's a haven for But it makes sense, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. so different. Yeah. But, but Dan is right that you know, once you locate a shoal, you can't really you know, take a lot of fish uh, because once you are that it is locating the shoal, but once you find them feeding. But on the deal though, Mark, I mean, I think it's, I'm giving you know, it's all cats and release, they, they don't kill at all, do they? Well, really? I, I don't know what I am. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm asking the question, I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure. Uh, uh, well, uh, amazing, uh, you know, the rivers of South Wales, the Taff, the Ely, and um, uh, the, the, they are rummy, they're very, very good. And, uh, uh, most of the uh, anglers that are uh, with Worcester, uh, with competition, now of course they return all the fish, but uh, there are others one, that fish with maggots and yeah. things like that, and I think they take uh, a toll of them, and, you know, they, they take a long time, as Pat said, you know, to mature a two pound of grayling, uh, you know. It's an old fish. It is a nice fish. <laughs> what is the eating like, anyway? Hmm? Being on the other subject, what's the eating like? Well, supposedly, yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, Scandinavians uh, <laughs> catch them and they smoke them. So the grass, They're yeah. actually very good. Yeah. 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 Toast a bit of one cucumber. Yes. Never try one. Right, any more questions, gentlemen? It was quite interesting what Pat said about fishing deeper than normal. I would fish a floating line ordinarily. Um, so it was quite interested in that. Matt. And um, I believe it was Stefan who may have guided the chaps out in the car park when I was talking to him. And like they had flies that were that big, like like sandy or type flies, yeah, snake flies. Yeah. And he was saying like if you fish them, uh, all else result yeah. on a sump line. That's right. Um, yeah. But that, that's the norm actually, I mean if I was going out tonight, I, 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 to be honest with you I haven't fished at all this area, I just haven't had time, but on Wednesday night I did go out down to the river for half an hour just to see what was happening because it's, it's only just about starting really on this river. The sea trout haven't been up this last three weeks because a friend of mine who lives in my Sikriga which is sort of six miles upstream from here had a lot of fish in a pool just below his cottage, one from me I'm talking about. Um, salmon and sea trout, you know big, big fish, you know four pounds upwards. Uh, so I went down on Wednesday night, just down the road, a mile down the road here, and sat on this pool for about half an hour, and I counted five or six real good fish. You know, I'm talking three pounds up to six pounds, you know, and I saw them, you know. Uh, they're very, very, very deep water, very deep water. Uh, you must be about 15 feet deep, 
banks in places, you know. And that, they were all there. But as I left, I saw one fish about four pounds leaving the pool and going up a channel on the, on the, on the right-hand bank on our side. Uh, he, he, he just leapt right out of the water, but it, it was a moving fish. It was sort of head and the tail, and he, I knew he was leaving the pool and going out from it, you know. And I was about, just as it got dark, because I left then immediately. But I mean, just add, back to what you're saying, I mean, we, we would start with a, a floating line, basically, in a shallower water, like the tail of the pool or whatever. And later on, as it got, gets much darker, then I would change to a, either intermediate, or depending on the depth of the water, of course, you know. But with, invariably with a sinking line then and, a, and a, a lure, either a tube fly, even up to two, two and a half, three inches long, or a snake fly. But to start off with, it would be a floating line with, with smaller flies, like a tea blue silver or a medicine fly. Are you familiar with the flies that we use? Some of them, yeah. 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 I mean, you don't need, need a huge array. I mean, you know, the, the focus is medicine fly, uh, black and silver, a rample really, you know, black and orange are good. I'm not fussed about the patterns really, size is important, and the depth that you, you fish it. Yeah. But you do need a selection in different sizes then, you know, you need some size t 12, 10s even, you know, I, I would use sometimes, mm. up to two and snake flies up three, four inches long at the time. Yeah. I, I think I have done uh, the question a, a good service because you start on the surface and then work uh, low. But um, in my travels and that I ask a lot of questions. Now, you know, Individuals, they vary. Now I asked, uh, the chap is no longer with us, so I can uh, tell you, Di Collier from uh, the Towie. Now we used to fish just off the tidal stretch, and he gave me one of his flies. <coughs> it was that long, at least six inches long, just black and r um, a vivid ribbing. And uh, I tend to think that this ribbing, just like the Tyre Terror, that this ribbing presents a better view of a fly than all silver or all black, because you get the uh, vivid uh, difference in the fly. You see, you get the silver band, and then uh, I think that is more visible and I think that the visibility is all important, but Di, uh, Di Collier, he used to get a lot of fish. Then there was um, uh, uh, Malcolm, uh, Malcolm Edwards, isn't it? Yeah. Probably the greatest Sioux in fishing, a fisher in Wales. He used to live in Aberystwyth. Now people used to say, no, no, he, 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 you know, he doesn't catch the fish he tells. I happen to take photographs of what he caught. Now, I've seen him coming in in the morning, mock, can you take photo? Four sewing, every one over 10 pounds. You know, people, he had understood the river because it, in addition to fishing the fly, you've got to marry the fly to the river and what he knew exactly of the Heidel, where the pools fished well, because of, if someone wanted a cup of tea in Manchester, they press a switch on the electricity, <laughs> and that affects the fishing in Aberystwyth. You know, <laughs> so there, there's a, a, it changes up and down. But Malcolm knew exactly where to fish at every level. And that is why it was his location more so than... Now, his tackle, you wouldn't believe it. And, you know, a, a floating line, nothing else. But he had a knot at the end of the, the line and a, a loop over it. And that was... And um, 10 pounds breaking strain and two... Um, uh, uh, tube flies. Nothing else. He never changed it. There was one tube fly with a, a gold body and one tube fly with a silver. <laughs> the only thing you said, I changed them around 
in the autumn. Yeah. So what difference they made. <laughs> now, yeah, now I'm going to tell you about your own river dying now. And uh, I can't divulge the name of the person, but uh, he was involved with me when I was um, having the trouble with the language. Uh, and he fishes the Tyvee. And uh, we got to know each other very, very well. Uh, as you realize with a person, you know, <laughs> who's got your, your life in his hands, more or less. And, you know, he showed me the, the fly that he used. On this stool, it was size 14. Nothing else. Now, I tried it, I, I, you know, I, I think it's a waste of time. But what I've done, I, I've given it the, um, you know, the Rapalan knot halfway down the cast. <laughs> because if, if a, a sea trout thinks, then he can take it, but uh, it doesn't work. But, uh, you know, I have every respect uh, for him um, because uh, he, 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 you know, he's not lying and, and he takes a lot of sewing. He lives not far from the river and he goes down. Uh, after supper, as he says, about nine o'clock to eleven o'clock, and uh, he's a farmer, so you know, uh, uh, he's uh, uh, in his spare time, but uh, he spent most of it in the hospital with uh, the lung problem. But uh, you know, it does vary that you, you've got to fish the condition, and you, you were talking about fishing in the day. Well, quite honestly, um, I, I, I don't think that fishing at night with, color, well, slightly coloured water, the fish are more intent on running than on, uh, you, I, I, I don't have... Very I, true, I, I, I can agree with you. They um, didn't fish well at night if there's a, a, a spate in the river or some, some sort of colour, just didn't fish well at all. And there's one thing... Set conditions like there is at the moment yes. is, is always the best time to see to fishing. Yeah. And uh, it is amazing, in 1976, the Cothy River was full of sewing. And um, I remember Porta Graig there, it's a massive pool. There could have been, I should think, uh, seven, eight hundred fish in the pool because, uh, you know, they dropped back from the running part and into the pool. And it was amazing. I was able to watch the fish. Very often you see a fish jumping up and you cast there, don't you? Oh, there's a fish there. The sewing do not come up at, from exactly their location. The, the fish that jump very often are ones, you can see them in the shoal, they start turning in the, in the gravel there and then they speed along for about 10 yards and up. Yeah. So they're, you know, that much away from, and they're coming back to one of your questions about, a guy you mentioned, you know, come down from the surface. Now, I know one chap who uses a die seven. He's a very, very good uh, uh, angler, a reservoir angler, and he strips along the bottom. He, he gets quite a few fish especially when we can't touch them. You're fishing normally, it just right down and then strip. So that speed at times, you know, counts as much as the level. But as uh, Pat said, you know, the level with, yeah, in fishing is all important because fish are lazy. They're not all going up there when the fear of food is down there. So, and the sewing, you know, very often you, you see him jumping, but you should see wh where he's moved from to uh, do that uh, jumping. As I said, the retrieve is important. I mean, sometimes, my favourite retrieve most probably is a, a, is a very, very quick figure of eight. But if, if that's not working, and I know there's a fish in the run that I'm fishing or whatever, I mean, I try different retrieves. You know, four inch pulls, even six inch pulls, yeah. uh, whatever, just vary the retrieve, you know. Because the air to induce this fish to take, I mean, you know, he's not e actually eating the food. I mean, it's, you're just infuriating the fish, really. And you're trying to lure him to take your lure, basically. Yeah. So, so you do need to vary your retrieves as well. 
not stick to the same one, I mean, or just cast across and let it come down. You do need to vary your reach seeds. But I've never found it successful to strip very, very quickly the seeds out, unless I'm fishing upstream, as I would with a dry fly. And I'm turning my back to, to the river running this way and fishing upstream, which works well in Riddy Galway, where Mock Stocking Mount is below the town here, was probably the most famous swimming pool on the River Tyree do actually. And in I've, Wales? Well, most probably in Wales. Uh, I mean, I've caught countless fish fishing upstream in very, very quiet water, you know, uh, and fishing upstream for them. You know, casting upstream, letting the fly sink to a certain level, and then retrieving it back, you know, which is completely diverse to what, you know, casting downstream, you know, 45 downstream is. So you have to vary a lot of things. I've just been doing this experimenting over the years, you know, and because I live on the river. Can I say, when I started I, with your father, and there was another very, very good fisherman, Cyril Bach. He was a, a great fisherman as well. And I remember the first night I came, I'd caught a uh, suin up on, um, on uh, uh, the Doithie up on the mountain and that with worms. But I came down to Tundersil to fish the night. And uh, I remember going down, Cyril was with me first before, uh, and then your father afterwards. And I remember fishing away, and Cyril would say, damn it, I missed one. And then, oh, and I missed another one. And I was thinking, hey, this chap is having me on, you know. Isn't it? <laughs> and I didn't get a fish all night. And I was thinking, well, what the devil is that? And uh, anyway, I was down the following night on my own now. And you know what I was doing? I was not in contact with my flies. That is very often, uh, uh, someone uh, writing said that he said, uh, well, uh, he takes a fly like a butterfly kiss or something. <laughs> that, that's the description. But that it, they take the fly, but they don't register, you know, they just as it were, feel the fly. And unless you're in contact there, you missed it. Yeah. And uh, I learned the hard way. <laughs> Mark, one thing that uh, I, I always do now, and I don't remember, <coughs> is to fish with a white line. And I fish upstream a lot, and the fly goes down, and I'm bringing it back just faster than the current, especially late at night when I don't move it fast. But I don't wait to feel anything. Because it's too late, as you say. So you follow that and just touch it. But you wash that line, and if anything happens to that line, if it seems to go too fast, yeah. move to the side, anything, strike. And it, it is amazing how delicate they are for such big fish. You're spot on. Yeah. But with, with, with using the big lures, uh, you mentioned earlier on, you know, the big long snake flies or two flies, invariably you, you fish them down, you fish those downstream anyway, you know. And the takes with those can be vicious. You know, they'll, you know, they'll rip the rod out of your hand, you know, yeah. I've known this through experience. Unbelievable takes, you know, smash takes. And the same goes with surface lures. Are you familiar with surface lures? Yeah, it's familiar as well, right. yeah. And that's very, that can be very, I've yeah, had some yeah. of my biggest double figure fish on this river on, on surface lures, you know. Very large as well, like alien oh, for it's, that. It's so it's magic stuff. I mean, just, you know, short leader, four, five foot leader is all you need. With a, obviously a floating line, just cast it across and just let it come round with that weight. And those takes can be vicious, really vicious. <coughs> that's very exciting fishing, that is. But it doesn't seem to work every night, though. I mean, I use it in very with, I'm using traditional methods of down and across or whatever with traditional flies and you know different density lines and if that's not working that's when in, invariably I'll switch to these surface lures especially on a very very dark night they work really really well and they're very exciting stuff got to try it. Uh, Hugh Hawkins used to use the mouse fly yeah. as he used to call it yeah. and he used to like once it got to the pool and of course you couldn't touch the pool until it was really dark <laughs> And, and he was a, a dogmatic man, and uh, you didn't do anything against him or else, you know, yeah, it's quarrel with the shadow. Uh, but uh, uh, he was to cover the pool with that, and then uh, he'd say, oh, I don't think there's anything in that pool worth bothering about, and then down to the next pool. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he, as it were, used the mouse for finding out if there were any uh, fish in the pool 
And I, and, and I found it very, very odd because I used a uh, fishing fleet at Calpe. You knew there were fish there, so it was a waste of time. Because they don't, with, it, with the surface lure, they don't, don't always take it. Sometimes they'll come up and oh, smash yeah. at it yeah. and not take it at all. Mm. You know, it comes across, it infuriates them, and they just go for it, but they don't actually take it. They just, you know, splash at it, basically. But in a big way, though, they'll come right out of the water for it, you know, good stuff. Mm. Yes, but I, I think you'll agree with me. It is the best fish of all. Oh, yeah, most and definitely. I still think that when the, uh, the good Lord created the world, that, uh, you know, when the fifth day he created the fish, and that the sewing was the last, having practiced on all the others, you know. But, uh, no, there's no doubt, you know. I mean, obviously, Mox and far more than I have, but I've caught my share of salmon and trout down rainbow trout, especially being an ex-international under the guidance of, a, of their manager, Mock, yeah. Uh, you know, caught really thousands of rainbow trout. It's, they fight well, but it's, it's nothing as it's like the sea trout. So. Even the small pound fish fight well, but I mean, to get a fish about six, seven, five, six, seven pounds, they are even the best fighting fish of all. Even be better fighters sometimes than the double figure fish, believe it or not. Great stuff. Yeah. Right, any more? Round of applause. Good. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Just a, a quick. I was speaking to a couple of club members just for a bit of an update yesterday, and, and the river is starting to fish quite well. You know, so, so we know Peter Rigg, we have a chap called Dudley, who I call Deadly Dudley. He's been a club member for the last couple of years. He had a £10 sea trout on Thursday night. And there were a couple of caught by Porth guests last night, so, you know, and they were nice fish, I believe, in the sort of two to five pound range. And the trout fishing in the Lampeter area has been excellent this spring. Our truck fishing, fingers crossed, seems to be recovering mm. um, um, because you know the Tiber used to be a real quality trout river, um, but uh, we think it was badly damaged by cyprinethrene sheep dip for many years. But it may be that it's starting to recover from that now. Mm. You know? um, so news from the river is good. Well, actually, uh, uh, Ian, I mean, I took two gentlemen who were staying here out about three weeks ago. Uh, I, I wasn't able to take them out at night, but I. They wanted to fish for salmon anyway, you know, the river was in fine fetter for salmon. And uh, anyway, um, I took them up to about fly only water in Master Creek there, and I had a rod with me, but I mean, I just spent some time with them because they needed a lot of casting tuition, and this, that, and the other. So that's where I spent my time. But I put on for them a very, very small little shrimp fly, like uh, an alley shrimp, you know, are you familiar with the alley shrimp, orange colour? But a very small one, a size 12, believe it or not. And they landed four trout. And we only fished for maybe an hour and a half because, I, as I said, I repeat myself, I, I spent a lot of time with them trying to have them cast properly. But they caught four beautiful trout, all of about a pound, you know, which was, was really good in an hour and a half. You know? And we weren't fishing for trout, we were fishing for salmon. You know? So, you know, the, the trout are returning, there's, there's no doubt about that. Definitely. Last year I caught some really good trout in our club water down below again. Um, fishing for sea trout at night, even in the dark. The best was about a pound and three quarter, which is a real cracking brown trout for, 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 for this river, or for any river basically. Uh, I caught lots of them, you know, fishing at night for sea trout, even on big snake flies as well they were taking. Uh, it was, you know, it's very encouraging to be honest with you, and what you're saying Ian, it, it, it's, it's perfectly yeah. true. I think the other thing about fishing the tiger is if, if you're fishing away and nothing's happened for half an hour, don't persist with what you're doing, change something. Mm. Change. It all comes with experience, gentlemen, you know. Yeah, but you know, again, if the fish are on, you know, you're going to get a, you know, a couple of pumps pretty much in the first half hour. You know? But as I say, if, you, if not, there's nothing happening, change something because you know, it's, it's, not, it's not worth persisting for hours with the same unproductive method. But local knowledge is everything you know, on any river. I mean, you know, you get, when you get to know some of the locals, whatever, you can go out with them. I mean, you know, I do some guiding for various people, but, you know, there are people, myself included, I mean, if I'm going out tonight or tomorrow night, for example, and you'd like to come out with me to see what I'm doing or whatever, you'd be welcome. I mean, a lot of club members would, would gladly do that for you, you know, because we, we ought to start at one time. And, and that's it, you know, local knowledge is important. You, you know, to save you the learning curve then, 
you know, you, you obviously learn much quicker by going out with somebody local. So, okay. uh, you know, it, it seems that uh, things are on the up this year. The Wire River, which is highly, you know, uh, uh, inspected and, and reports from it, and genuine reports, and it seems that this year they're having a good, uh, good uh, salmon on salmon, Very good. a big salmon. Yeah. So really, we don't know perhaps, you know, uh, uh, what we must realize that what happened at sea, a shoal can be taken out by one net, can't it, uh, you know? And uh, uh, so it does seem that uh, there will be some, um, more salmon this year. Than the Wyalusk Foundation will claim responsibility yes. for that improvement, uh, Mark, and they'll say that it's come about through habitat restoration. Habitat restoration. That is the current thing, and this is what the Trust is really all about uh, in this valley. Um, in all some of our tributaries, um, in which are the river's nurseries, are unfortunately in a very badly degraded you know, condition. Um, and the Wyalusk, I think they've had maybe getting on for two million spent on it by now. Um, There's no question that the river trusts are the future for Welsh rivers because they've got money and uh, and link clubs uh, will find, uh, unfortunately, if uh, the trend continues, that uh, perhaps income will be down. So, well, it's something we can do. You know, it's a positive intervention. You know, if you can improve the habitat on your river, then you're, you know, enriching a natural hatchery, and it's sustainable. You know, I mean, basically, we're fencing agriculture out of our streams, um, but it's something that needs to be done.